everyone and welcome. This is Melissa Armo with a Stock Swoosh. Hope everyone is having a fabulous weekend. Nice long weekend here in New York City for Labor Day and a beautiful 75 degree day. Fall is upon us. Ever since we had that hurricane in New York, the weather has been fantastic. Fantastic. So looking forward to soaking up every single beautiful day until the winter months come. So I wanted to review the first eight months of 2021. This is the live trading room results, advanced trader tracking, which an advanced trader risk is approximately $2,500 per trade. Some were slightly less, some were slightly more, but it's a rough estimate of what you would need to risk in order to get these results for the first eight months of the year. 2021, three, uh, 375,711. So this is again, eight months. So uh, it depends really how big your account is as far as how much you're going to risk per trade. And also I get this question a lot as far as, as how much money do you need cash to take some of the trades on margin. So we'll talk about that a little bit here too. When you're taking a day trade, these are all equity day trades, you have to use margin. Now, if you go to a retail account, you're going to need a minimum of 25,000 to get four to one margin, which would mean you'd have 100,000 in buying power. If you go to a prop account, uh, there are some prop accounts you can open up an account with as little as $2,500. Most require 5,000 and you're going to get 10 to one margin. So for example, say you had 5,000 in account, 10 to one is you'd have 50,000 in buying power, but that doesn't mean you're risking all of that in every trade. For the advanced trader results, you'd be risking $2,500 approximately per trade. And this is an average of about $46,000 per month, okay, in uh, results. As far as what I do, I, I use my gap rating system. And, and that's what I follow every single solitary day when I take the trades. It really depends if you want to do active day trades or if you want to do options. I, I, some people prefer to do options. Why? because they can't be in the room every morning. All these trades were called in the live room. In order to join the live room, you must have taken the Golden Gap course. That's where I teach the system that I apply and use every day. I'm excited about the fall. I'm excited about trading. Uh, between now and the end of the year, I think we're gonna have some volatility. I'm surprised we haven't had more volatility this summer uh, with all of the things that have happened, but the unemployment benefits expire today, Labor Day. And I'm really interested to see where the futures open tonight um, and where we trade out the rest of this week. So if you have any questions, you can email me at melissathestockswoosh.com or call me at 929-3200-GAP. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So we're getting into the end of summer, officially today, and then fall will start. And then we have the next earnings season, which begins in a few weeks. Earnings season is a great time to trade my system. Why? Because a lot of stocks that uh, report earnings gap. Now, I don't take trades into earnings. That's very dangerous. You don't know how the earnings are going to report. And sometimes you get positive earnings, fundamentals, as far as what the earnings say, and the stock gaps down or vice versa. You can't tell anything from that. I don't trade based on fundamentals. I trade based on technical analysis, advanced technical analysis, okay? That is what I do and that is how I make trading decisions. So starting out the first of the year, uh, January, BA, beautiful, uh, short to go into the start of the year, which is funny because we did that so, we did the stock so often in 2020 with the coronavirus. Uh, and, and I said the other day, 50-50 chance that we have another shutdown. I wouldn't put it past this administration to have another shutdown. No way. And it could be this year, it could be next, who knows? All these variants that they keep talking about. <laughs> We're living in a world that the government has really overtaken uh, people's lives so much. Spy lost. Then on the 6th, two losers in Facebook. Retake did not work. BYND was a nice winner. Apple's a winner. Seventh, two in the BYND, one loss, one worked. Sometimes I'll do a retake. And, you know, I like that and that worked. The eighth was Boeing again, winner, CCL a winner. Got to get back to doing that CCL. Love that stock to trade. Nice, small entries in the CCL. And with a good profit, good volume. 
The 11th, Twitter loss, Facebook loss, Boeing loss, Twitter loss, Facebook loss, BA break even, Facebook won, and Apple won. That was a long day for me. You could tell when I'm doing a lot of trades, it's a tough day. The best days I ever had are one ticker symbol and done. 12th was Netflix one and CCL small winner. 13th was BA one, Twitter one on the 14th. WFC was a winner on the 15th, 18th closed for Martin Luther King holiday. Twitter was a winner, 20th Netflix lost, and the second trade won. 21st UAL was a winner. Beautiful week here, 22nd IBM won, 25th Apple won, Verizon won in the 26th, 27th BA won, SPY won, no trades on the 28th, SPY lost in the Facebook won in the 29th, no trades on February 1st, UPS lost, SPY won, Q's, one loser, one winner on the 3rd, QCOM won in the 4th, SPY lost, then break even, QCOM loser, another break even on the 5th, Diamonds won in the 8th, I will do the market ETFs. They can be pricey, but you can do options in them if you don't want to do, you know, the day trades on margin. Ninth was IBM lost and Apple lost. Tenth, they can lost, Twitter lost, then Twitter big winner. February 11th, Spy lost, save one. Then the 12th, Disney lost, IBM lost, Twitter won. Close 15th, Twitter won, no trades in the 17th. WMT was a winner, Twitter winner. 22nd, BA lost, WMT won. No trades on the 23rd. Then on the 24th, Spy lost, Spy won, Twitter lost, Disney won, 25th BBY lost, Twitter lost, and then another loser on Twitter, DPZ won, Foot Locker won on the 26th, Spy won on the March 1st, DDD won on the 2nd, Ross won on the 3rd, Spy lost, then won on the 4th, GPS lost, Facebook lost, and GPS lost on March 5th. Facebook lost and Apple won on March 8th. Facebook on the, I mean, on the 9th and March 9th was Stitch Fix. That was a good one, I remember that. March 10th, Spy lost and Stitch Fix won again. March 11th, Oracle won. I think Oracle's this week, actually. Uh, March 12th, Oracle won again. Lily won on the 15th. Spy won on the 16th. No trades on the 17th. Apple was a winner on the 18th. Nike was a winner on the 19th. 22nd, no trades. If I get up in the morning and rate the gap, and there isn't anything that rates per my 26-point rating system, I will not trade. I just won't do any trades. 23rd, Wells Fargo lost twice. Apple lost. Boeing, huge winner. 24th, GIS won. Loser in the queues. Netflix winner, Apple winner. 25th, Spy Lost, Spy One. 26th, Facebook Lost, Apple One. JPM One on the 29th. The spikes have been rocking this year, which I'm shocked. It'll be interesting to see if that, that continues into the fall. March 30th, Apple One. March 31st, Lulu One. April off for that week, Easter. April 12th, no trades. Fast Loss on the 13th, Apple One. And SPY won two. April 14th, BBBY break even. April 15th, C lost Apple one. April 16th, MS lost BA one. No trades on the 19th. The 20th, IBM won. Netflix lost. And then second one was a winner. LVS lost. Netflix won. INTC winner. No trades on the 26th. Then getting up to the end of April, UPS was a good winner. That was earnings. And we did a put in that too. April 28th, save loss, Starbucks won, and Microsoft won in the 28th. Most of these trades are short, but some of them are long, just so you know. We mostly short in the room because we want the quick moves, fast, in and out between 9.30 and 10, but some of these trades are longs. If I don't find a good short, a good bearish gap, then I will look for a bullish gap. Uh, that's usually, you know, what I do every morning. April 29th, eBay won. April 30th, Twitter lost, then won. May 3rd, Twitter won. Microsoft won on the May 4th. No trades in the 5th. May 6th, Spy lost, Uber lost, Netflix lost, Etsy, big winner. May 7th, BYND just did not work at all. Three trades and a loss. Then finally a winner. That was hard. Shaq was a good winner, though. May 10th, Q's, winner. May 11th, Q's lost, Microsoft lost, Apple, Boeing, Spy. This was a crazy day. BA break even, then find a spy worked. May 12th, Microsoft, two trades, one loser, one big winner, and then a huge winner in the spy. That was May 12th. May 13th, Baba lost. Target, big winner. 
can look at Target tomorrow. May 14th, Disney won, Microsoft won on the 17th, and May 18th was AT&T for a winner. May 19th, Spy lost, Q's lost, A1, big winner, Spy break even. Cisco lost on the 20th, KSS winner. 21st, no trades, BYND again won. May 25th, Apple lost, Shaq lost, and then another loser in Shaq, and DY was a huge winner. That stock can be really spreading, that DY, but it was a big winner. JWN Nordstrom won on the 26th, DLTR won on the 27th, and HPQ, which I love to trade, won on the 28th. Then June 1st, SPY lost. June 6th, Amber lost, Apple won. Off for the week of the 3rd, Stitch Fix lost, QQQ lost, Apple winner, and Stitch Fix a winner. June 9th, Campbell Soup to Losers, QQQ Loser. June 10th, Spy Lost Qs won, Microsoft won. June 11th, CCL lost, Microsoft lost, Lily, two winners. And then June 14th, Apple was a winner. No trades on the 15th, Oracle won on the 16th. No trades on the 17th. Again, you have to be disciplined when you trade. I also use stops, I use limit order stops. When I take a loss, which you see, the ones in parentheses are losers, it's because I had a stop in. And again, sometimes I'll retake it. You're better off doing that than letting the trade go against you. You have to have a fixed risk. It has to be similar risk on every trade. That's how you make sure that you don't let yourself lose too much. And you book the winners. June 18th, JPM won, SPY won on the 18th too. June 21st, no trades. June 22nd, Apple lost second trade was a winner, big winner in the retake. QQQ's won on the 23rd and KBH Builder was June 24th and that was a winner. I think that was, yeah, I think that was earnings. June 25th, FDX won. I have to look at when this is. This might, FDX might be this week for earnings. June 28th, SPY lost, Q's won. No trades on June 29th. June 30th, Apple won, STZ break even. Mew is a fabulous winner July 1st. Apple nice winner on July 2nd. Off for the July 4th holiday. BA won on the 13th. BAC won on the 14th. No trades on the 15th. QQQ's lost Netflix won on June, uh, July 16th. Diamonds won on July 19th. No trades on July 20th. And Netflix was a winner on July 21st. July was a really, really good month. July 22nd, LVS won. July 23rd, INTC won. July 26th, LVS won. July 27th, UPS won. July 28th, Microsoft lost. Cake won. PayPal won on the 29th and PayPal won on the 30th. And then I think I think July, I, I hardly had any losers in July. Microsoft lost. Q's lost. I only had two losers in the month of July. July was a good month. Okay. Uh, August 2nd, no trains. August 3rd, T2 was a winner. August 4th, CVS lost. CCL lost by one. August 5th, Etsy lost, CVS won. EXP was a winner on the 6th. BA was a winner on the 9th. No trades on August 10th. August 11th, WW won. August 12th, Baidu won. August 13th, Disney lost. Baidu won. CCL lost. Baidu won and Q's won on the 16th. And BA won on the 17th. And uh, then Target lost on the 18th. BA lost on the 18th. Q's won. And the 19th, BA was a big, big winner on August 19th. August 20th and 23rd, no trains. August 24th, AAP lost. Apple lost too. August 25th, Urban won. JWN won. DLTR won on the 26th. Peloton was a winner on the 27th, no trades on the 30th, and Zoom was a winner on August 31st. So first eight months of the calendar year. Average risk for these results again, which is 375,000 plus for the first eight months of the year for 2021. This is the live trains call in the live daily trading room. And in order to join the room, you must take the class. After you do the class, it's $500 a month to be in the room, but it's a prerequisite to have taken the course. The trades set up quickly. Again, these are all equity trades, but I will tell you that there's a split. I'd say half the people in the room are doing day trades and options and half are doing the just the day trades. So some people are doing both. 
You can take a beginner risk. You can risk $100. You don't have to risk $2,500. You can risk half that and expect half the results. You do not have to risk this much. I've been doing this for a long time, okay? 12 years I've been doing this. So that is a long time. You do not have to risk this much. You have to know what you're doing before you trade. I say start out slow. But again, having goals is the right thing. And if you prove to yourself you're doing good at the first month, you can step it up. You can step up your risk. I'd say this year, 2021, has been a very, very, very interesting year, particularly for the market. We've never seen these kinds of uh, moves in the market on such negative, uh, with a, such a negative economic backdrop. Uh, part of the reason is because I think the Fed is continuing to keep rates low, and the Fed is willing to do anything they can to pump up the market. And then the government's doing everything they can to pump up stimulus, which is giving free checks to people. But in the meanwhile, it's causing massive inflation, and now that the extra unemployment is over today, it'd be really interesting to see where we go towards the end of the year. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, if you want to ask me what I think about the size of your account and what you want to risk, ask me what you think. You can trade this with a small account or a large account. It is up to you, but you have to use stops. I use stops with a big risk. Stops are like the insurance. It's a protection. And again, why no one likes to lose in a trade, I know that I'm going to have more winners and losers, and I've got to keep the losers down. So you want to have small losers and big winners, okay? So I always use stops. It's a limit order stop. Personally, I think day trading is fun because you're in and out quick. Sometimes when I'm in an option, I never know because I might be in it when I go to bed. Again, you have a fixed risk with an option and I get the bigger overnight moves, but I like the idea of chunking it out, chunking it out, making money, getting out. Quick, 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 quick. That's what we're doing in the day in trades. Now, I was talking to you about buying power early on. So say you have a $40 stock price. 200 shares was what? 8,000 in buying power, not in risk per trade. It is in the BP or margin. So you could you could take that trade with a $2,500 prop account with a 10 to 1 margin because you'd have 25,000 in buying power. So for example, if the stock was a dollar in your direction, you can make what? 200 bucks. $200 a day equals $1,000 a week. With a small account, I think that's very realistic for people, and people should look at it that way. If they have limited funds, they need to be green, green, green. You can day trade with a beginner account and risk. The only difference is your share size is smaller. That's okay. And sometimes, you know, when you're forced to be very careful, you'll end up doing better. But I think people should be careful if they have a big account or a small account, personally. But you can grow a small account into a larger account, so know that. I think everyone is at the point now where we're looking for financial freedom. And, you know, don't count on these stimulus checks that people are getting to last forever. I think those are short-lived, short-lived. We're living in a situation right now where people are going to take charge of their own finances and their own personal financial freedom. It is up to you. It is up to you. I'm going through the gaps. I'm writing the gaps in the morning. That's the benefit of being in the room and me calling the market. But it is up to you to size your trades correctly. You have to take the trade yourself. You have to put the stop in. And you have to get out yourself. And yes, I do call the targets and the exits in the room as well. If you'd like more information on learning my system, it is called the Golden Gap Course. And it is the Golden Gap 26-point rating system. It's how I make every single pick that I make whether it's a day trade or an option, quite frankly. It is like finding gold in the market, and that's how I termed it, because when you get a gap, it is a high, high win percentage working. Trading is not about 100%. I wish that I never had a loss. Like, if I could get to the point where I'm so, so, so perfect, um, it would be amazing. But the reality is that some trades don't work out. So knowing that, I'm always striving every single day for perfection, and keeping my losses to a minimum and booking my gains. The 26 points came because I took three years out of my life to figure out the system. And again, if I could come up with 56 points, I would. Trading is about odds. You need to keep the odds in your favor, high odds. The higher the odds, the higher the rate of gap, the higher chance of success that the trade is going to work and the more money I can make. Lower rating gap, low odds. So you don't do it, okay? So the class is online. If you were interested, the next class is September 25th and 26th, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Class tuition, everyone pays the same price. It's $6,999 U.S. dollars. And yes, you have to pay in U.S. currency. I only accept credit cards for the cost of the class. I do not accept PayPal either. Uh, you must email me for the forms to sign up. You cannot sign up on the website. 
The class is online. If you are interested or if you have questions, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com to sign up and register. Sign up early so you to make sure you get in. I have a limited number of people I take per class. I do do the class once a month, but this will be the class to get into before the next earnings season begins. And again, you want to be able to trade earnings season to make money, not only to make up the cost of the class, but also be profitable before the end of 2021. So our earnings season starts in October. So you want to trade in October, November. That's the time to be in the room and that's the time to make the money. The trends course is September 28th. If you want to sign up for the combo, you save $500. The trends course is about long-term trades. This is good if you are interested in swing trades, options, or even to help you with your day trading. You will save if you sign up for both together. $74.99, again, class is this Tuesday of that week after the uh, big class, 11 to 3 p.m. Eastern time. If you're interested or have questions, email me and Melissa at thestockswish.com or call me at 929-3200-GAP. Have a great day, everyone.